Welcome to my video review and thoughts of the 1978 short, The Story of the Faithful Wookiee. And yeah, um, the review itself will only have spoilers for A New Hope, not for this itself. And yeah, once I've done the review, I'll, I'll let you know that I'm getting into spoilers when I discuss the content in more detail. Now, in the description box, the top link is to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. It's an extremely important strike. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And yeah, um, let's get into it. So, the... Um, this is this is nine minutes long. It is a segment, and currently the only one I'm doing of the infamous Star Wars holiday special. I suppose if the holiday special is ever put on Disney Plus, I will at least consider doing the rest of it. But right now, I'm kind of grateful that this is the only segment that is on Disney Plus. Um. I suppose it's it, it's. I'll I'll briefly get into why I'm even doing this in the first place, since I'm not sure very many people are still thinking about this one. I'm basically doing everything that's on Disney Plus that Star Wars, and isn't like Lego or. Actually, I guess the Lego stuff is the only stuff I'm not doing. If you love the Lego Star Wars stuff, that's great. I'm glad you have that. It's just not really my kind of thing. But, yeah, after I've done this, you know, ne next week Ahsoka starts, so I'll be doing that one. But as soon as Ahsoka has had its entire run, or the first season, however that works out, I will do... Every other week, I'll do a video on an episode of Droids, and the other other weeks, I'll do an episode, a video on an episode of Ewoks, until I've done those shows in their entirety, and then I will have done everything Star Wars that's on Disney Plus that is not Lego. So, yeah, um, there are some very interesting things here. This is an actual story. That's, you know, I don't know if it's, I guess it's not considered canon anymore, though it doesn't make a huge impact really. But the, the you know, it's not the most eventful story. The plot itself is, it has a, a decent enough hook. Like over the course of it, it's fine. It's not like you gotta drop everything and go out and watch this. But I won't give away d details, but just the the very start is the rebel base, including Luke and Leia, can tell, and and you know R two D two and C three PO can tell there's something weird going on because the Millennium Falcon is not res like it's it's behaving kind of weirdly, and they get like an image. Uh, you know, live feed, and Chewie is flying, but Han is tied up upside down in the background, and, like, yeah, you know, there, there's something weird going on there. Han and Chewie were on a mission to get their hands on a talisman that renders everything invisible, which is obviously, that could really help tremendously in a war effort and yeah um, Luke R2D2 and C3PO go you know to to investigate and I suppose yeah and it's not a spoiler to say this does indeed not only feature but actually originally introduce Boba Fett you know this came out after A New Hope before Empire Strikes Back you know yeah, not a spoiler to say, he's in Empire Strikes Back, not in A New Hope. Yeah, that's a spoiler for A New Hope, but I already said I'm spoiling New Hope. And, yeah, like, that's a, it's a, 
that's a decent hook, you know, like, I can imagine, if you haven't watched this already, you might be like, okay, I gotta find out what's going on there, because that doesn't sound like Chewie's normal behavior, you know, what is, like, he's in pretty gung-ho, you know, he's, he's very into the, the resistance in the, in the movies, so, you know, not, not from the very start of A New Hope, but he's, like, you know, he he really doesn't need very much encouragement to, to join in with the resistance, you know, even though it's, like, dangerous, and, you know, he doesn't, at the, you know, at the start, he's, you know, he works with Han Solo, they're smugglers, you know, but yeah, um, it is, there's not an awful lot of action, what there is is fine, it is very much TV budget animation, you know. So, so like I mentioned, it's from it's from 1978, and you know, fair enough. I don't think there there was ever any intention of putting it in theaters, you know. The the um, what's the word? The the um, I don't mean to be rude, but compared to like feature animation at the time, you know, your your Disney's, your studio Ghibli's, you know, let's, I'm, I'm gonna, real quick, so, Studio Ghibli, oh, actually, huh, I, I have forgotten, no, yeah, that's right, their feature film started in 84, and, oh, uh, I guess they hadn't done any, huh, okay, but, yeah, you know, in 84 they put out Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. So much better animated than this, you know. And, let's see, Disney, I... I think... The one that's probably the closest to release of of this from, from Disney might be, like, the original animated Jungle Book. I'm gonna do a real quick... Check because I'm gone right here. Oh, that's right. Wow, I completely forgot. Yeah, yeah, they um Okay, there's a Vinny Winnie the Pooh thing. Right. Rescuers. The rescuers. Yeah, yeah. Significantly better animated than than, than this, you know. Um that was from 1977. So it's, you know, it definitely does, and, and it's also just, I appreciate that they tried. They, they did try to render the, the fairly unique looks of the, the you know, um, Carrie Fisher, R.I.P., Harrison Ford, and Mark Hamill. And honestly, Carrie Fisher looks fine uh, in, in her animated form here. Mark Hamill is mostly good, but my god, those eyes, just piercingly blue eyes, which, you know, yeah, um, Mark Hamill has very, like, his, his eyes are very striking, but not like this, like, they just, they, they, they peer into your soul, there's this really uncanny valley thing going on where like because the rest of, like a lot of you know he he looks somewhat okay otherwise but like just those eyes Harrison Ford like I don't like his his face is really like long and, and tall and it's I don't I don't know I, I don't quite know and and you know um everyone has four fingers which I think that's like an animation thing, uh, I, I certainly heard some, some, you know, like, you know, um, four fingers, that's also like the, um, ah, what are they called? The, the, the Simpsons, for example, you know, and yeah, I, I believe a number of, of famous animated, you know, the the voice work is fine. Uh, I wish Leia was in it more, and it's 
it feels very uncharacteristic for her to not join in on the adventure. Um, and and it doesn't even work for like, you know, oh, she's, you know, no, she's like super personally invested in, you know, like, I'll grant that the relationship between Leia and Han, you know, that's more of an Empire Strikes Back thing than, like, the, the I mean, the romantic relationship, you know, they, they tolerate each other in A New Hope, but, yeah, it just, it feels a little weird that this is, like, set between the two movies, and she doesn't join in at all. It's very boys club, no girls allowed kind of vibe. Uh, Anthony Daniels does a, a good job as as ever. Um, for some reason, I, I I have to imagine that the animators just hadn't watched the movie. C three PO, like his his fingers and he like he blinks. He is every bit in in this animated thing, and I I hear also droids the show. He is every bit as capable of gesticulating and like ex you know body language as a human is you know so it's it's very like it really stands in stark contrast that he's like doing all these he like he crosses his arms at one point can you even imagine like movie C3PO can barely move his arms, other than like raising and lowering, you know, like the the costume would would break if he tried to to cross his arms, and it's just it's completely unnecessary. Like I get in droids, it's probably like um you know he's one of the main characters. You gotta have as much expression as you want from a main character, and it's like a kids show. But but this just like it must have been. Like, I, I knew, I knew going in that there was, you know, I'd read it about droids, so I figured there's a decent chance it's in this as well, but it, it really, it's, it's fascinating to, to see, and I, I can't imagine the, like, the biggest fans at the time who sat down and tuned in, you know, they, like, I don't know how... They they must have been pretty some uh, pretty shocked I can imagine, and um, yeah the the I think that is about yeah and and you know the animation it does the thing with you know I I forget what it's called but like stretch and release I think some something like that you know which is a way to make a more or less static character look like they're more dynamic and moving and you know I'm not gonna go hard on that because that's you know like like I said it's it's a TV budget kind of thing um Boba rides like this I, f I forget what it's called but this massive like dinosaur Loch Ness thing and yeah like it's you know, and that is apparently canon. Um, the the you know in the Mandalorian. You know, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Um, the one who says I have spoken. I'll see if I can get the, Quill. That's right. Or is it pronounced Quill? I I think they pronounce it Quill. Um, you know, he's he tells Din Djarin, You know, what your ancestors. Myth mythosaur, I think they call it. Yeah. Your ancestors rode the great mythosaur. So, you know, the, the, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And he's, he's super chill about it too. Like he, he treats it like, what, what this, this old nag? Ugh, yeah. This, don't get me started. She's, she's, she can be super temperamental. Just, you know, no, don't don't go too close to. She's she's, she's gonna she's gonna bite at you if you get too close to. Her. Just you know, be, you know, he's he's acting like it's a horse, and and that's that's fun. I think that is more or less. Um. Right. Uh. One thing that also like. 
the voice of Boba Fett here um, is is actor Don Franks, R.I.P. And he actually, like, he voiced it in a, in in I want to say droids. Also, I I read, but this is actually I th I think this is the one thing on Disney Plus at least where Boba Fett is not. You know the the uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. I'll I'll have it momentarily. Um, Timuera Morrison, you know, the the voice is distinctly different, and that's that's also kind of interesting. You know, I I do feel bad for I want to say the name the, um, the the guy who did it in Empire Strikes Back. The the voice. Um, was it Jerry Bullock? I th I think it. Uh, I'll I'll check if he he did the physical. I'll see if the. Oh, that's right. Jason Wingreen did the voice uh, originally, before they they redid it. You know now, the the. You know it can be difficult to even get your hands on one where that's the the voice of. Boba. Um, there, there's some some alien text in this that's never actually translated, which you know, very Star Wars, very especially like classic Star Wars. So that's really cool. And I think right there was um, let's see. Oh, that's right. Yeah, those were yeah, those were the non spoilers. It is very much like, you know, I haven't watched, I've only seen video reviews of the holiday special, but as far as I understand, it is largely filler. Like, not, there's not a lot in it that really needed to be, like, that you need to watch, you know, and, and yeah, this is another one of those, like, it's completely unnecessary. It's, you know, it's it's really cool that you can just go on Disney Plus and watch it today. You know, I, I appreciate that they do make so much Star Wars available, but it's it didn't need to exist in the first place. And right, uh, there's some yeah, um, there's some decent IMDb trivia. You know, this was the first on-screen appearance of Boba Fett, but the character made his first public appearance two months earlier at the San Anselmo County Fair Parade on the 24th of September 1978, which also featured appearances by Darth Vader and several stormtroopers. During this parade, the Boba Fett costume was worn by Dwayne Dunham, who was working at the time as an assistant film editor before becoming a film and television director. I've seen a little footage of that. That is really cool. He's he's got the you know the body language. He's he's looking very very cool, very confident. Which you know if like imagine having to wear that entire thing and like I gotta say you know it, especially considering it's the first appearance. Like the guy in the Darth Vader costume is probably like I'm the badass. Everybody knows you know. But like what if people laugh at the Boba Fett costume? You know. But but it was very popular as far as I understand. And, right, Boba Fett uses a Sacros K-11 blaster pistol, a.k.a. the Disintegrator, and an M phase pulse blaster. The latter weapon was also used by Din Djarin in The Mandalorian. Although Nelvana later worked on Star Wars droids and Ewoks animated series, Ken Stevenson, the uncredited animation director for the animated segment, was the only crew member of the holiday special to return to work on those two shows. Right, uh, Nelvana was the, the company that worked on the, not, not a person. The word friend is spoken 12 times in this nine, anim, nine minute short. Six are spoken by Boba Fett, three by C-3PO, twice by Luke, once by Han. Uh, additionally, R2-D2 also utters it at least twice, albeit in binary droid speak. And yeah, there's this I mean, this almost must have been a joke. I don't know. Maybe they thought that you'd still... But, yeah. There's this thing where a character in this uses, like, a, a public phone. And there's three thick phone books visible below the device, which... 
I, it's, yeah, it's sometimes fascinating, the kind of, you know, Star Trek also thought that, the original series thought that, you know, one day, you know, maybe hundreds of years from now, human beings will travel the galaxy, but we're still gonna need, like, you know, phone, what are they called again, phone ladies, phone operators, you know, let's not go nuts here, there's no way that that's ever not gonna be necessary, you know, this is fascinating, and yes, I am aware, Uhura is not just that, you know, she has, she has many jobs, but it's just, it's fascinating to me, the way that the future was you know, predicted or perceived back then, you know, in the in the sixties and seventies. And and some more recently as well. And let's see. Yeah, uh this is the only segment from the holiday special to have been originally released by Lucasfilm. A few seconds were shown in Attack of the Clones Buckethead web documentary which is on the Attack of the Clones DVD. And, yeah, the complete segment was included as an Easter egg in the Blu-ray release of the complete Star Wars saga in 2011 and became available to stream on Disney Plus starting April 2nd, 2021. And, right, and Han Solo's Lucky Dice can, in fact, be spotted in this. And... When, uh, let's see, yeah, at one point, several large Dianogas are seen in the murky waters. And, let's see. Right, and, <clears throat> at one point in this, a Kuba's fruit cellar can be seen sitting next to an entrance. And it's the same species as Gorindon, the spy who snitched on Obi-Wan and Luke in Moss Eisley. In New Hope, it is the only time a Kubas is seen without a mask covering its long snout. And yeah, and and the let's see. Yeah, there's one point where many alien species are passed in the streets, including two sand-colored aliens with very long shaped heads that resemble the moon species introduced in the form of Sand Hill in Attack of the Clones. And yeah, that is it for the spoil free stuff. So let's get into my thoughts. And this might be real quick because I don't have a lot to say, but I, I thought it was cool that there's a, a water planet. And I, I like that it's not said before it's shown. Because it is like, you know, and it, I also like water planet. I mean, isn't. Isn't our planet technically a water planet? Because there's like there's more water than there's Earth on our planet. Now. Anyway, but but yeah, you know, you see the the ship, that uh, the the Millennium Falcon, you know, get close to the surface, and instead of like crashing into ground, it like you know goes briefly underwater and then like resurfaces. You know, this that's a, a cool kind of you know I, I appreciate Star Wars always trying to like show us something we haven't seen and it is the kind of thing you know imagine trying to do that with like live action like like um like model you know that's just yeah you know and and it's it's not the only water landing in star wars but i it is the the first that we see chronologically and in the yeah in the in the order that the movies came out, and yeah, so the the I gotta say the moment that I saw Chewie, you know, behaving kind of weirdly, and you know the the amulet, I don't remember what it's called, and I don't think they call it amulet. Um. Huh. Uh. Uh. I'm gonna. Okay we're calling an amulet, then, you know, I, you know, and he, yeah, he's behaving weirdly, and Luke is like, what are you doing? I thought maybe there was, like, an invisible Imperial there who had, like, a gun on Chewie making him do, but no. You know, and the, yeah, you know, he destroys the amulet because there's a sleep virus 
you know, I, yeah, the Empire knew that the rebels would look for this, and you know, yeah, it was it was a trap, which, you know, the Empire is fond of those, so that checks out. I I like that you know Chewie like shoots to try to keep away Luke, you know, and like he's clearly being careful to miss, and. Yeah, this and and it's also it's a it's a decent enough idea. This thing of you know like oh it the sleep virus affects humans, but not like Wookies, and the the there's a uh, what's the word? Yeah, and the the thing with you know Luke doesn't understand Chewie. I I guess at this point he needed. That translate. I it has been a little while since I watched A New Hope. Certainly later on, they seem to understand each other fine. But yeah, and the um, yeah, uh, you know, watching this today, it's of course not a huge surprise that Boba Fett is working for Darth Vader. You know, I've actually at first I was like wondering is the the you know is this before he he did that you know but yeah you know at the time it must have been a cool twist you know obviously today it's you know and it's not it's not fair to judge it based on that you know i've seen the sequels to this short so of course there's stuff in this that isn't going to be as surprising the the fact that boba keeps calling people Calling Luke friend, working, uh, you know, yeah, I guess Luke at this point was fairly naive, and I mean, I guess maybe there's a, a stranger danger warning in there, you know, the fact that, you know, he keeps calling us friend, he really must be, ah, you know, the, the, yeah, um, the the ending is very uneventful like i was thinking oh you know there's going to be a fight between you know several rebels and and boba fett but he just flies off and that's it you know it's yeah i mean i'll grant it's it's i didn't feel like the short wasted any time you know it it doesn't feel ridiculously padded the way that certainly the first ewok film not not as much the second did and those were also TV productions that were made to to you know keep the brand fresh in people's minds and such. I think that might be about. Yeah, I mean the the fact that this really doesn't change anything. Like, if at least by the end of this they had gotten their hands on something that was really necessary for them to succeed in one of the other movies, but, like, hypothetically, like, I, you know, I hadn't really been missing anything all these years that I didn't watch it, you know, and, and I just feel like that's, that's too bad, you know, like, comparatively, you know, I, I realize it's not a completely fair comparison, but now that I've watched all the other animated, you know, the, the only animated Star Wars, official Star Wars stuff that I haven't watched by now are droids and Ewoks. Like, maybe, maybe not so much with Resistance, and I suppose, you know, Young Jedi Adventures is not as much, like, canon, you know, but, like, yeah, you know, the, so, so yeah, that leaves, you know, Clone Wars, both versions, um, Resistance, no, not Resistance, Rebels. Uh, Visions, which are also, you know, not really canon, but compelling Ewing. And uh, Bad Batch, you know, all of those, I'm really glad that I've watched now, even though it's not, you know, not all of it is like, oh, it completely changes, you know, it, it adds, not, not all of it adds to canon, but there's, you know, there's really, really compelling, cool stuff there. And I mean, you know, this is a short, Visions is a series of shorts, so, you know, hypothetically this could have, 
you know, it kind of, it, you know, it, it reveals the fact that at the time, they didn't really think of Star Wars as what it eventually became. You know, this was a way to to make some money and to, to keep people interested. And I guess, actually, hold on, when they made this, did they know they were making more than one movie? I'm not entirely sure. So, I, you know, I can appreciate that, you know, like today we look back on the holiday special as not being amazing, but... At the time, they, you know, a lot of people just wanted more Star Wars. And and something I've always really appreciated about the holiday special is it's not about Christianity. You know, it's this fictional, I think they call it Life Day, which I really, I, I really respect a piece of American media that doesn't try to censor Christianity. That's, yeah. I think that might be about I guess the the reason <clears throat> the reason that Boba doesn't really stay in fight is that the that imperial you know the the idea was that the the stormtroopers that followed Luke back to the Millennium Falcon they would be able to stop but why were they so close? Like, they were so close that... Not uh, not Luke. Chewie, sorry. The, the, you know... Like, I realize, you know, Chewie, canonically, a crack shot. We know this already. But why so close? And why shoot? And it just... It really felt... Just... Like, uh, you know, that that's the kind of thing you write if the characters didn't know like if oh suddenly the Imperials realized that they were there but no it was a trap like they had planned it Boba had and and I don't think yeah it wasn't like and that's you know another thing is you could have had like R2-D2 and C-3PO radio Chewie and say although I guess yeah he you know Boba didn't smell right so he knew there was something up yeah and, you know, it's fine, it's it's not this big, amazing thing, it's just, yeah. Um, that is what I have to say for this one, so, yeah, catch you next week. Really, really thrilled for Ahsoka. Until then, may the Force be with you.